How's it going everyone? I'm here to review the Kevin Steen Show finale with the Young Bucks Volume 2! Uh, if you guys do not know, the Young Bucks was actually on the show already. They were on the Tag Team Edition, which came out. I think it was the fourth, or the third Kevin Steen Show to come out? Yeah, I think it was Elgin, Cole, and Tag Team Edition that came out. And uh, they're on the show once again for the final last uh, for the final one. So, uh, you know, what better guess than the Young Bucks? Uh, especially considering how good friends all three of them are together. So, uh, without further ado, let's run into the video and I'll review this show now, shall we? Alrighty. As you see on the cover there, you have the High Spots logo as always. You have the curtains behind the Kevin Steen Show logo. Finale! With the Young Bucks Volume 2, of course, you have Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson. You have the Kevin Steen Show uh, little board that they have for all the shows. You have Kevin Steen right there with the Super Kick t-shirt, Super Kick Party. Uh, get a little cover right there. You open it up. This is pretty much the same as the cover. Just a shrunken down uh, black and white version. Here's the spine, of course, the same as always, the Kevin Steen Show, Volume 2, with the young, or the Young Bucks Volume 2. Uh, here's the back, nothing really significant, just the curtains. Um, right there, the Kevin Steen Show for now with the Young Bucks Volume 2. Who's messaging me or tweeting me at this hour? I don't know. I'm doing a video, so, so I won't find out until after the video. Uh, of course, you have the little description, bio, whatever you want to call it these days. It doesn't really matter. Everyone knows, you know, it's just information hyping up for this DVD. The back, it says, well, it's time to say goodbye and and get a real job working at the Gap. Which, if you watch PWG and the Kevin Steen shows, you'll understand the joke. Uh, Kevin is moving to Florida for some odd reason, and he couldn't do the Kevin Steen show anymore. Also, flights from Orlando are ridiculous, so, uh, so it's time for us to, to go our separate ways. Since we are a little Fergal at the Kevin Steen show, we would rather prefer more bang for our buck with our last venture. What better way to go out than having our guests, the tag team that... Have that has sold more t shirts than anyone else in history of indie wrestling, the Young Bucks, from Matt Rushmore to the Bullet Club. Matt and Nick Jackson uh, talk about being in the two most over factions in pro wrestling today. I also find out why they call Nick the Indie Taker and why you won't see the Young Bucks in Dragon Gate USA anytime soon. Spoiler alert, it's the same reason. It's appropriate that the Young Bucks were Kevin's first guest nearly two years ago, which is incorrect, by the way. It was Michael Elgin. They even acknowledged it on the DVD or in the show. Uh, on the tag team edition, that also had. And also his last guest on the Swamp. Okay, let me start the little over. Uh, two years ago on the Tag Team Edition, and also his last guest on his Swing Song or Swan Song, whatever. Uh, so sit back and enjoy as we ride off in the same same sunset. Bonus match: the Young Bucks versus El Generico and the Great Sasuke from Pro Superstars in 2012. Approximately running time: two hours and three minutes. Now, this Kevin Steen show. Uh, it was pretty short. I mean, it says approximately runtime is two hours and three minutes, but it includes the match as well. So the actual interview itself is only an hour and thirty-seven minutes, unfortunately, which I found as a little disappointing because I want it to be, you know, it's a finale you'd expect it to be pretty long, but it wasn't. Which, but you know, I was okay with it. I, you know, it didn't bother me. But uh, what you got in that that hour and thirty-seven minutes was just pure entertainment. This may have been. I uh, take, take for granted I have not seen every single one yet, so I can't say which one's the best one. But this is probably the most entertaining, most enjoyment I probably had from one so far. I actually, I found myself laughing a lot. Uh, there's their stories, you know, them talking about their stories are just very intriguing and very entertaining. Uh, just listening to all three of those guys talk at the same time, just talk about their stories, like I just said, and share. So I thought it was very entertaining, very hilarious. Um, the first thing they started talking about, which is pretty funny, I thought, was merch. You know how um, merchandise, you know, pros and tees are pretty much revolutionized merch and how you know, they have fans make t-shirt designs, they use them for their t-shirts and put them on pro wrestling tees. And pro wrestling tees really evolved the past year for merchandise, you know, they would go to their own shows and make their own shirts, but now with pro wrestling tees, you know, pro wrestling tees can make their shirts and they give it to them, so when they go out to the shows they can sell them and sell them online. So, uh, pro wrestling tees helped out in, uh, indie wrestlers a lot in the past year, uh, they mentioned, and you know, Cole Cabana is actually <laughs> uh, the one actually started the t-shirt thing. And not just the t-shirt thing, but the whole pro wrestling tee things. Uh, Cole Cabana actually started a lot of things in the wrestling, which is kind of surprising, Surprising, I thought. So it was cool listening to talk about that, the merchandise. Uh, they actually got off track a little bit with the merchandise. They talked about merch for like 20 minutes, so that was pretty funny. Uh, then they talked about New Japan, how the Young Bucks you know, go to New Japan, and how over they are and how respected they are, and uh, you know how the guys really like them over there. And um, just, you know, it's a completely different... Uh, being in Japan than you know the United States, how they said they go to Japan and they'd be noticed in the streets right away. Where in the U.S. they wouldn't be noticed that much because you know Japan's huge in wrestling. Uh, or wrestling's huge in Japan. Where in America, you know indie wrestling isn't really all that known to the public, so they get noticed a lot in Japan. And you know how people would pay for them to superkick them. You know at the dinners. You know how 
the uh, the rich uh, Japanese people would you know service them for dinners, and they would have you know their friends would want you know either chops or super kicks, and the young bucks would deliver to them, um, which was hilarious. They actually, I have a clip on YouTube of uh, the young bucks super kicking a guy, uh, which is just awesome. Uh, the indie the indie take the uh, indie taker nickname where that came from uh, basically uh, the young bucks show up to a Dragon Gate show with some other guys and. They started playing basketball, and Gabe supposedly got, got all pissed off that they were playing basketball for whatever reason, uh, which they said they were there three hours before bell time. So they were just killing time, playing basketball, having fun, and Gabe supposedly got pissed off at them for it and basically went off on them. And Nick basically, uh, being the guy, the great guy that he is, by the way, pretty much just went up to him and said, no, you can't do this, so you better apologize. And Nick pretty much, I wouldn't say went off on him, but pretty much, you know, the frustration he had, uh, from past experiences with him as well, just pretty much filled up, and Nick just told him how he felt, and that was the last time the Young Bucks, you know, um, associated themselves with Dragon Gate. Uh, they say now they don't have much problems with Gate, but they just they don't want to work for him. Uh, plain and simple as that. Uh, I talked about PWG. Uh, they actually uh, threw out a lot of PWG ideas. You know how um, Mount Rushmore came about, and actually, uh, you know, Matt Rushmore is the inside joke where uh, Matt Jackson actually has a Matt Rushmore T-shirt that they created, but instead of the four faces of the Young Bucks, Steen, and Cole, it's actually Matt's face in all of them, so that was pretty funny. He talked about how uh, the original Matt Rush, or Mount Rushmore was supposed to be uh, the Young Bucks, Ken Steen, and uh, El Generico. That was actually supposed to be the original Mount Rushmore, but of course Generico left before they could do the idea, and they bugged Super Dragon enough to the point where they said, alright, we'll do it. And it was actually a plan, there was a plan set in stone that it was supposed to be a eight-man guerrilla warfare with the Mount Rushmore, uh, it was supposed to be Mount Rushmore versus... Uh, Super Dragon, I, Drake Younger, I think, was involved, and um, they didn't really specify who the other two would have been, but they're supposed to be an eight-man guerrilla warfare. I uh, never panned out. Um, it never worked, unfortunately. It never happened, so it was very unfortunate. That would have been an amazing guerrilla warfare with the uh, with Mount Rushmore. That would have been awesome. But, uh, yeah, they talked about how uh, uh, it's been set in stone, or it's been planned, where the Young Bucks wanted, wanted to plan that they dropped the tag titles of Candice and Joey um, in a guerrilla warfare match. They actually, you know... From Bola last year, they were so impressed with Candice, they wanted to drop tag team titles to her and Joey. And, uh, you know, it took almost a year, but it happened. You know, Super Dragon finally gave into the idea. Um, talked about the gathering of the Juggalos. <laughs> How, um, it's if you watch the Kevin, not the Kevin Scene show, the uh, Kevin's Weekend Escapades, the episode where uh, they're in the middle of nowhere, the Juggalo show, and they're scared out of their minds. They go in depth about that, and the stories they tell is just hor horrifying and horrific. Um, just, the stories are just like, whoa, like, why would you even agree to doing that? So it was a, gathering the Juggalos wrestling-wise, it's, that's, it's not fun to say at least, the way they put it, they definitely, Steam was only there because of the Young Bucks, but the way they told the story was just like, man, why would you even want to go there is my question. And of course, talking about the Bullet Club, you know, join the Bullet Club and how, Basically, Steen said if he went to Japan, if he didn't, of course, sign with WWE, he'd want to join the Bullet Club. And they pretty much told him, like, hey, man, if you would have came to Japan, we would have welcomed you to the Bullet Club with open arms. And, uh, yeah, this this Kevin Steen show is very entertaining, very informative. It, it picks up from the, the Kevin Steen show with the tag team edition, the first volume with the Young Bucks. It pretty much picks up right from there. So uh, you can easily probably sit back and watch both of these back-to-back -back and enjoy it very much. But Kevin Steen show, uh, it, it was a fun ride. I haven't seen all of them, so I can't sit here and say, like, you know, Oh, this is the best one. This one's the best one. I've seen majority, well, not majority of them. I have half of them, but I probably watched about six or seven of them. So I think there's 20 of them in total, and I have 10, so I still have 10 more to get. And, and uh, uh, I still have a lot more to watch. So Kevin Steen show, they're always fun. Uh, finale, pick it up for sure. A lot of fun. Great finale. You know, at the end of it, you know, Nick Jackson, or both of them actually end up super kicking the uh, Kevin Steen show sign. So pick it up, Kevin Steen show finale. That's it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, I'll see you next. Yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Until then, later.